My name is William Justice, and today we're going to be creating this magnifying glass effect in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. There are really a lot of things you can do with it. Um, you can use it to zoom in on a map location. Or you could create a spyglass eye effect. You could find words on a page. Or you could zoom over a text, logo, list, or anything like that trying to highlight an item. This effect is pretty easy to set up. We're going to use a background image, a magnifying glass image, which is like a PNG that lets you see through it. And we're going to set it up and overlay it and animate it around. And the part right in the middle of the magnifying glass is going to be the zoom in. This video is a bit longer, so definitely stick with me. We're going to be setting up a lot. We're going to be setting up expressions. Um, we're going to use a dent effect, animations. We're going to do some uh, retiming of things, adjusting animations, curves, everything like that, um, adding drop shadows. And, e and even doing an effect where we kind of highlight what's inside of the magnifying glass and the background is a little bit dim. Okay, now I'm sure there's a lot of ways to do this. I came up with a couple different ways, um, but if you, have, if you have something that you think would work too, let me know. I'd really love to hear it. There's probably, uh, maybe, probably a lot better ways to do this. This is just kind of what I came up with. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. I have a lot more coming. I'm going to be coming out with some tutorials about filmmaking as well as a lot more content um, about DaVinci Resolve and Fusion to set up some great animations. Comment below and let me know how I'm doing. I would love to hear from you. Let's get started with the magnifying glass animation. Okay, let's set up the magnifying glass animation. Um, basically what we have is we have a blank timeline. I have a map, um, a magnifying glass image, which is a, a transparent PNG that's gonna let everything show through. And then just another image. So we, we're gonna use a little bit of everything to set this up. So to get started, we're gonna right click in the media pool, click new fusion composition. We'll name it magnifying glass. Our mag glass is close enough, and let's just give ourselves 15 seconds to work with. We'll create that. Okay, we're going to drag the magnifying glass fusion animation into the timeline, and click fusion at the bottom of the screen to get in to fusion. Okay, here we are in fusion. We're going to bring in the, uh, we're going to use this video of, uh, of me talking right here, and let's connect that up to the media out. So that's going to be our background, and we're going to zoom in on this anim this uh, this right here. So the first thing we want to do is to add a transform node. So with media in one selector, we're going to hit Control Space, search for transform, and add that in. So it puts the transform in node, and this is going to allow us to zoom in and zoom out for the magnifying glass effect. So the first thing we do is we only want to zoom in on a small portion of this image. So we're going to add a mask to the transform. So it's only going to affect what's inside of our mask. Um, with transform selected, let's click this circle here, the ellipse tool, and we'll shrink that down. So inside of that circle, that's going to be what we're going to want to um, zoom in on. So let's uh, hit transform. And we're going to blow up the size, and you'll see that the size changes only within within that circle right there. And that's because we have the ellipse masking out the transform. So the transform is only going to have it's only going to um, affect inside the circle. Okay, so we have the ellipse, the transform. So now let's add in the magnifying glass. We're going to take the magnifying glass from the media pool and drag that in. And we're not going to need the media pool, so let's click off of that. And we're going to take let's see, hit, we'll hit uh, two. So that's the magnifying glass. We'll click on media out and hit two so we can see it. I'm going to take the output of the magnifying glass and move it into the transform. And that's going to put the magnifying glass on top of the, the transform and add a merge node in there. So let's move this down. So we're going to want to add a transform to the magnifying glass to move it around and put it right on top of the ellipse circle. So we're going to click that and then let's hit this uh, transform button in the toolbar there. And this is going to allow us to move the magnifying glass and we'll take it and we'll size it down a little bit so that it goes right there. Okay, now the, the next thing we're going to want to do is because we're going to want to move, um, let me line this up just a touch better. Um, we're going to want to move the magnifying glass around and we're going to do that by moving the ellipse. So let's select ellipse and you can see as we move this around it animates. But you'll notice that it doesn't animate what's, um, it doesn't zoom in on what's underneath it. And that's because the zoom effect is zooming from the center every time. So if we, let's uh, go ahead and we'll disconnect that and we'll disconnect, we'll uh, disable the ellipse. 
and you can see that when we when we zoom in with this transform it's the, the point of the zoom is from the center and we want the zoom to be zooming in from underneath the circle so when we move the circle here we want the zoom point to be exactly at the point of the circle so let's re-enable the ellipse and to do this we're going to have to use an expression so we'll put the ellipse in, in here and we're going to hit this little button up here this little pin to pin it and that's going to keep the ellipse on the screen and we're going to go to the transform it's like the transform you can see that we have the transform on top with the ellipse so we want the pivot point of the transform to be the same as the position of the ellipse that's right here so we're going to right click on pivot and we're going to say expression then we're going to click on this and it's going to draw a line and we're going to go to the center point of the ellipse and what that's going to do is it's going to set the zoom point to be equivalent to the same as the ellipse you can now see that we're zoomed directly underneath there so when we zoom in it's right here because the bottom one is zooming using the point of the ellipse as the reference and now when we take the ellipse and move it around you'll see that everything is going to follow it okay so we have our ellipse tracking the zoom point is set now we need to get the magnifying glass on so what we're going to do is go back and we're going to reconnect with the magnifying glass we're going to take the output of the transform and put that into the merge and we need to flip the inputs because we want the uh, magnifying glass to be in the foreground and we're going to select merge one and hit two so we're going to see the magnifying magnifying glass right there that's where we put it um, now you'll notice that when we move the the zoomed in point the magnifying glass is not moving along with it so we need to do the same thing we did and have the magnifying glass we're going to add an expression onto it so that it moves along with the zoom in point to do this we're going to select on merge one and you'll see that we still have down here we have the ellipse pinned and we're going to right click on the center for the merge and hit expression and we're going to connect that up by drawing this line we're going to use left click on it and draw the line down to the center x of the ellipse and you'll see that the magnifying glass went over so now when we select the ellipse and move it around the magnifying glass is going to move with it all we need to do is just adjust the position slightly of the magnifying glass so it sits right on top so we're going to select the transform and we're going to bring it down right on there now you'll notice when we move move it around it moves all around moves around together so let's select the ellipse so that okay the next thing we're going to do is a little bubble zoom in effect so that when it's hovering over something it's a little bit distorted which would that's what you expect from magnifying glass and we're going to use the the dent to tool to do that so let's select transform one hit control and spacebar and search for dent we're going to select dent and add that in and you can see here we get uh, this, this crazy looking thing and we're going to size that down to be right about the size of the magnifying glass and there's a lot of different options here that you can use and choose um, actually a lot of different options you can change the strength of the distortion and we're going to change the type so we're going to we're going to choose dent two and we're just going to make it a small amount like say 0.4 so that it's just a little bit little bit distorted on the magnifying glass um, we're going to need to do the exact same thing and attach the center of of the dent the xy position with the xy position of our ellipse because we're using the ellipse as the basis for everything so we're going to right click on the center select expression and we're going to connect that up by left clicking on it and dragging down with the center of the ellipse like that and you'll notice it says ellipse center so we can grab the ellipse now and move it around and it, everything moves together like that next underneath this transform we're going to add a, a quick drop shadow that helps the magnifying glass kind of stick out um, kind of have, get a little separation from the image gives it a little depth okay so we're going to select transform to control space bar and we're going to add in the the drop shadow effect and let's make a few adjustments here we can adjust the size of it and we'll turn it on and off so you can kind of see it gives it a little bit of separation there let's uh change okay let's uh, animate the magnifying glass um, with the 
ellipse node selected, we can drag it around. You can see that it uh, everything's following it. So let's move it down to the lower left-hand corner. We're going to start it out there. Make sure we're on the first frame and click the keyframe button for the center X and Y position for the ellipse. Now what we're going to do is just kind of move it around and change the time. So we'll go to you know, like around 25 frames and we'll drag it up into here. We'll go about to 50 frames and we'll drag it down to the lower left, I mean lower right. Uh, let's say 70 frames, we'll bring it up into this area here. And finally around 90 frames, we'll bring it right over to where my face is. And we'll see what we got there. All right, okay, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to smooth this animation out a bit. So we're going to select each of these points and we're going to hit this um, right here to turn this point into a curve. It's going to smooth it out. We're going to do that for each of these points and we'll smooth that. And then we can use these handles to adjust it a little bit with each of the points. So it's going to kind of uh, go around the screen around these curves now. Just like that. Um, one of the other things we can do is use the spline editor so that as it's going around each of these curve points, we can kind of have it hover and kind of rock back and forth a little bit on each of those. So we'll show you how this works. We're going to um, let's see, click this button here to bring the inspector up, and then we're going to click the spline editor. We're going to select, select the displacement for ellipse one, that's the position, and hit this little button here to bring everything in. So let's just show you how this works for this one point right here. I'm going to click this point and we're going to click the, the curve um, icon right down here to smooth it out. And then we can take these handles and kind of move it a little bit. And what this means is it's going to, as it's coming along, it's going to go a little bit past the point and then come back down through it. So you'll see here when we go move it just, this is the point right here, move it in front of it and you can see it's going to go back and forth a little hover, hover thing. So we're going to go ahead and do that for each of these positions. It's pretty quick. Select each one, so hit the curve icon, and then we'll just invert the curve just a little bit. And we'll make it pretty quick on this one. And this one will do the same thing. So each of those points is just going to rock back and forth just, just a little bit. So let's see how that works now. So it kind of gives the effect like the magnifying glass is kind of hovering, searching, um, kind of looking at certain areas a little more. Okay, let's try this out with the map. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the map and drag that in and disconnect the transform and put the map in as the source there. Now it looks like we have to reset our magnifying glass size. So we'll scale that down a bit. And we're going to want to put it right on top where that ellipse is. Okay, that's close enough. Let's go back to the ellipse and now we have the magnifying glass kind of tracking over our map like that. Now to slow this down, it's pretty easy. We can just go back to the spline editor and click this icon to see all the points. I'm going to highlight all these points like this and we're going to use this tool right here. Um, let's, uh, we can go do this, uh, we'll do the time stretch. So I'll go a little bit more so you can see it. So we can just take the time stretch and just kind of stretch this out. And that means this whole sequence of points is going to happen over a little bit longer period of time, which is effectively going to slow down the animation. So we'll go to there and go back to the editor and let's see what we have. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, one more thing we can do that kind of might help the effect a little bit, especially with this map, is to kind of darken the map a little bit and have the part under the, the, under the magnifying glass be a little bit brighter. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take the, uh, the media in and we're going to, let's see, we're going to add a merge node. Let's disconnect that here. And into this merge node, we're going to take the, the media in and do the input of the merge node. And then the output of this transform is going to go into that. Let's disconnect that one. 
and then we're going to connect the merge back up in to there. Okay, so we have the map background going into the the ellipse, which is the which is going to be zoomed, and that's going to be going on top of the background. So we're going to use that twice. So we're, let's add in a brightness contrast node right here, and we'll hit F2. I'm going to select brightness contrast and hit F2, and we can adjust some of these settings. Kind of make it a little bit darker, bring the gain down like that. Now you notice that when we hit uh, hit this merge down here, everything is bright. That's because we need to use this same ellipse mask, and we're going to take this and we're going to bring it down as the mask for the second merge. And you'll see that that bright point sticks out now. So when we select media out and two, we have a dark background, which is coming down through this path. And then we have the highlighted area, which is that effect is not going on, is on this transform, and that, that's going to sit on top of the background. So let's see what that looks like. All right, and that's pretty much the effect. There's really, a, there's probably, actually when I first did this, there was a, I, I did it a completely different way. So there's probably a lot of different options for setting this up, um, but this one seemed to work pretty well. Um, if you can think of other ways or better ways, let me know. I'd be kind of curious to see what you come up with. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that and got a lot out of it. There's a, there's a lot going on in there. Um, you can pick out little pieces and use them for different projects and lots of things that you have going on. Um, please subscribe to follow my progress. A lot more great videos coming. Thanks for watching.